Hello everyone and welcome to four battles in the Farragut. The Farragut is a tier 6 American destroyer. I don't have nearly as much experience in it as I did in the Isokaze in my first video for World of Warships. And you can see that here I still haven't got enough experience to unlock the Sea Hull though I probably won't get the Sea Hull anyway because it takes away one of the main turrets and adds just AA mounts, anti-aircraft mounts. So uh, I think I will pass on that. Otherwise it's fully upgraded. I don't have any premium consumables, I don't have any upgrades installed, again I'm lacking in credits, and my captain is not overly experienced. So this is basically, you know, um, if you are just starting on the Farragut and you finally unlock some of the stuff, this is basically where you're at. Thankfully on my first battle I am top tier, so I'm facing tier 4 and tier 5 ships as well as tier 6 of course. This is not a domination battle, so I just have to uh, go with the flow here and make sure I'm protecting the bulk of my fleet is, is the best thing to do. And so I'm going ahead of it and with the rest of the destroyers you see I have a lot of company around me. And we're all just trying to make sure we spot for our fellow ships. And take out any opposing destroyers is probably the main goal here. So I'm shooting at this Omaha. He's right at the edge of my range so it's a little bit tough to hit him. Um, you can see on the map I've got a 12.5 kilometer range. Fortunately this map has a lot of islands to work with but the opposing destroyers also can make use of those islands and you can see some of them there. The opposing Farragut in particular is going to be interesting though I played the Minikaze and it's quite fierce. I'm still interested in this Omaha. The Omaha is pretty dangerous to destroyers. It's good at setting fires. It, I am in range of its guns. It also has 5.5 kilometer torpedoes, so that's dangerous as well. But now the Isokaze, well you saw me in one in the first episode of World of Warships. And so obviously I know exactly what it can do. And you can see all the torpedoes streaming out from it and possibly the Farragut as well. I'm trying to take aim, but it's in smoke, and so by the time I actually can get a shot off, it's going to disappear on me. There we go. There's a Congo there I can shoot at, but I don't want to uh, leave my broadside open just in case. Uh, just in case those torpedoes start going at me, so I turn first. I wait for the Furutaka in front to clear. Now, you can tell that I'm more of a Japanese destroyer guy because I'm uh, trying to use torpedoes instead of just going with the guns. I should just focus on the guns. I'm basically surrounded by destroyers. We've got uh, we've got um, Farragut there, we've got the Isokaze, and then the Itzislav just bit the dust. So... The fact that my allies destroyed the Itzislav was a good thing. Uh, its smoke is still there. But I don't think there's any threat. I'm constantly being detected here and with that Texas over there that's pretty dangerous. And here also the Congo, the Farragut, the Konigsberg, all very formidable foes. Again with the torpedoes. I really need to get out of that uh, habit. But uh, here we are. The torpedoes have a 6.4 kilometer range. So in theory I could do something like to this Congo. I'm trying. Trying to sneak up on him and release the torpedoes. But probably I should have just done the normal American destroyer thing which is sort of sit in smoke and snipe with my guns. Just annoy him quite a lot and set some fires. Oh there's the opposing Farragut. I've been wanting a piece of him since the beginning but He's wiggling around way too much for me. He's definitely gonna dodge all of my shots, especially at this kind of range. Yeah, no luck there. But he's got a lot of support there. I mean, you can see he's almost in his zone, his territory, and the ships are just about to leave, though. Uh, and some of my torpedoes were aimed at uh, Congo there, but they were too short on the range. So here we go again. All the juicy battleships are raid before me, but there's the Farragut. And I have to deal with him first, no question about that. And of course once I start trying to deal with him, the battleships will all see me, 
and try and kill me while they still can. And so I'm dodging too. I don't know who shot the torpedoes, probably the Farragut. The Konigsberg, which is the tier 5 German cruiser, also has torpedoes, but not at that range. Thankfully, I do have plenty of help. I've got a fellow destroyer, I've got a cruiser, I've got battleships behind me. They're trying to cap our base, we're trying to cap theirs. That's typically how this map goes. We sort of go in a big pinwheel sort of thing, each trying to cap each other's bases. Okay, not even looking at the torpedoes, luckily they're passing by. He's done for. Alright, well it's about time, but then there's that Konigsberg, now definitely within torp range of me, and also I'm within torp range of his torps. This is pretty close range, and if this was a Japanese destroyer, uh, that would that would be it for him. But because these torpedoes are a lot slower, he gets to turn away from them. The Konigsberg is pretty nimble as it is though. I've set myself up in smoke. I really should be switching to my guns now. I think I was expecting that my my friendlies would uh, get rid of that Konigsberg, and there's nobody else easy to shoot. I mean, there are the battleships. They're technically in range, but first I have to dodge all of these shots by people who uh, are aiming at my smoke, basically. Trying to figure out where I am. So just doing a little bit of dodging. A little bit incredulous that my torpedoes didn't finish this Konigsberg off. Thankfully these shots didn't actually kill him, somebody else killed him. I don't think uh, with my failed torpedoes I deserve the kill on that one. Okay, well now I'm detected because I'm out of the smoke. Still trying to weave around here. And taking a look around, uh, there's an Omaha. Now he's got those 5.5 kilometer torpedoes and that can give a lot of trouble to the battleships. Also he's got a lot of guns that can set a lot of fires so um, I know I've played the Omaha and I like chasing battleships around in it. So yeah definitely want to prevent the Omaha from getting too close to our battleships. So that's my current goal but the torpedoes were futile he could easily dodge those at this range. Trying to get some shots on him, but this is not going to work out. It's sort of amazing that with all these ships in range who can take me out with one shot, one or two shots, that I'm still hanging around here. Unfortunately, that's not much good for my team, which only has three ships to the enemy's eight, and they've almost finished capping our base. I really should have focused on hiding and trying to cap uh, their base before they capped ours. And if I had just sat in smoke or hid somehow, I probably would have uh, maybe got a win out of this one. I did get a lot of credits, and that was actually because of the Axis American Hunters uh, thing. Ironic, because of course I was an American ship, but there was 250,000 credits for that. But I didn't do that much damage. I suppose my definition of a decent game is when I do more damage than I have hit points and I get a kill, so I guess by that definition I had a decent game. But uh, here we go now for the next one. I am mid-tier. I am with tier 5s and tier 7s. And so this should be interesting. This time it's domination, so I do the normal thing for the destroyers, which is to zoom to the nearest cap zone, in this case A for me. And so I pour on the speed as much as I can. And I'm on the lookout for opposing ships. There's a Konigsberg. 
Again, tier 5 German ship. Really powerful guns. Good at uh, citadel hits. And so I'm gonna try and sneak in here. And pouring on smoke. smoke generator started. As the I don't want the Konigsberg to actually know exactly where I am before I put on the smoke, so I did before I was detected. And now I wanna take some shots at the Konigsberg. Now my torpedo range is 6.4 kilometers, and you know, I'm conditioned as uh, more of a Japanese destroyer type, focusing on torpedoes rather than guns, so I will try and torp him, and we'll see how that goes. Okay, here we go. Now that's really at the edge of my torpedo range, it's unlikely that I'll work. You see I deliberately shot some away from the his current projected path, just in case, but he actually turned completely around. Gunnersburg is very nimble, I should definitely do more with it, I haven't uh, used it very much. Okay, I'm taking some damage, so I flee. I decide that I should flee a bit. There is an island to hide behind, but there's also an island to avoid beaching on. Very important. Because I'm very much detected, and if I beach, I'm pretty much done for. I need to keep moving. Engine boost deactivated. Ow. Main turret critically damaged. Yeah, well, that Konigsberg is really irritating me now. So I turn to uh, try and finish him off. He's down on to his last legs here. And it looks like I'm getting pretty good support from my team. That's nice. So aiming. But he's done for. So, well, I can uh, continue on. A is capped, so we haven't lost it or anything. And it looks like my team is having some trouble capping B. The enemy has a firm grip on C. Here is this Molotov. Now you'll note that I switched to AP because Molotov has really weak armor and AP is armor piercing. So I'm trying to take advantage of his weak armor in order to deal maximum damage hopefully with a Citadel hit. It's a dodgy thing with a destroyer to try and get Citadels. But the Molotov is prone to them, I know that because I have one. It was the first uh, premium ship I purchased. I had played the game for many months without ever giving Wargaming any of my money. Uh, and I decided it was time to actually uh, support them after enjoying their game so much. Uh, so I bought some premium time and the Molotov as well. It is a tough ship to play. Premium ships in this game are not, like, easy ships. They're actually tougher. The Tier 6 Soviet cruiser, which is the Bugioni, the free one, uh, that you get just by playing the game without buying it, uh, is uh, an easier ship to play than the Molotov. It has much better guns, it has way better armor, and uh, you can see the Molotov dying there. I get finished off by a York, finally, but uh, yeah. Uh, that Molotov really should have hung back. Uh, it's not really a ship that's sort of a frontline ship, it doesn't have the armor for that. Okay, so here we are. Yes, the York finished me off. I was second uh, in the XP. Not too bad. I was reasonably satisfied. It was a lot of fun, obviously. This is the third game. Uh, again, I am mid-tier, and so we'll see how that goes. Once again, it's a domination game, so I just head straight for the nearest ca uh, capture zone, and that is C. Uh, you see me angling towards the island because I want to make use of the island for shelter. I also apply smoke to hide in there, and my first goal is simply to capture the area. I'm not trying to take any shots. I wait until I have... I'm pretty sure that even if somebody manages to get a shot at me, I'll capture the area, then I take my shots. Because if I'm accidentally detected, that's no good. So I've captured C and then I aim at this Atlanta.
Now it's tough because the island is not giving me any shelter from their ships. You can see their ships are all on the side that the island does not give protection from. So, bad planning on my part there. I'm eventually going to have to leave sea temporarily just to keep myself safe, but this Atlanta is a really juicy target. The Atlanta is a premium American cruiser, and it also is a little bit hard to play sometimes. Though I think uh, it, it has its benefits. It certainly has its benefits. It's especially known as a destroyer hunter, I think. It's pretty good with destroyers. In this case, not so much, though. Yeah, I think it's safe to say that the Atlanta is in serious trouble. Okay, well, I see the Kirov there coming around the island, and that's interesting for me because I can sort of use the island to sneak up on him. So that's what I plan to do after I get undetected by the Atlanta and everybody else. After all, if I turn around to try and hunt the Kirov while I'm still detected, the Kirov can see that. If it looks like I'm just straight up fleeing, that gives the Kirov some some confidence in coming around the island over there. So now he doesn't know I'm coming for him. And he just took a lot of damage there, so that's interesting. Somebody got a good shot off at him. Unfortunately, the enemy is capping C at this point. Kirov is sort of the little brother of the Molotov. It's very similar in some ways, but not... Uh, the Molotov has much more powerful guns. It's better at sniping targets. On the whole, the uh, Kirov is very similar to the Molotov otherwise, though. But it's only a tier 5. And here I got my torps off, but I am going to finish him off with the guns. He can dodge the torps, which he is doing. And I got him. Now, there's still the matter of that Atlanta, who uh, has managed to stay alive somehow. So, back to him. There's still some smoke there. I'm detected, though. Taking some blind shots here. He's going faster than I think he's going there, so need to adjust. Now I'm starting to get hits. Okay, and plenty of support coming in. And suddenly I get killed. <laughs> Out of nowhere, destruction. But I'll wait around and make sure that Atlanta gets pulverized. His penalty for ending my battle. And there we have it. So yeah, the Atlanta got me in the end. I did a fair amount of damage this time. I got a kill. At least I got a kill, you know. But, uh, yep, I'm, I'm still pretty high up there as far as the team XP is concerned. So that's nice. All right, on to the next battle. And this time it is Ocean. No islands to hide behind, which is a real pain for an American destroyer. American destroyers like those islands even more than anybody else. The Japanese destroyers can sort of sneak up on you and release torps uh, without you knowing it because like the Isokaze has a 6 kilometer detection range and a 7 kilometer torp range. Uh, the situation is not like that for the American destroyers. They are detected first and uh, only after they're within detection range can they use their torpedoes. So uh, And the guns uh, increase your detection range. So the torpedoes don't increase your detection range, but the guns do. So when I fire my guns, people can see me. Engine boost deactivated. If I fire my torpedoes, that does not increase the detection range. So that's easier to deal with without any islands. So this was a domination game, and I had a destroyer on the same side as me, and so we both capped A. He got there first, and so... I immediately turned after we secured A to go for B, and here I'm sneaking into B. I am detected though because there is this enemy destroyer Bluskowica, that's a, a Polish destroyer, the only Polish ship in the game right now I believe. 
And there are his torpedoes. And he's going to be an ever-present threat in this one. Just to uh, give that away. And I realized this right away, but the first priority is to cap, and since I'm no longer detected, I just sit silently. I learned a lesson from the other game, right? These are four consecutive games, and after having that situation where we lost because I failed to cap, I certainly wanted to make sure I did all the capping as a priority this time. And that means not shooting, so... Well, but, I mean, I'm not detected by shooting because I'm in the smoke. The smoke prevents you from being detected. Well, except now I'm detected because I guess I'm out of smoke. Uh, but I'm trying to back back into it. That's why I'm going in reverse. Trying to hide again. After a while being careful, I finally got the cap. And I think it was just me. Uh, nobody else was uh, going in to be. And then my focus went straight back to the Blue Skavitsa. It's right at the edge of my range though, again range 12.5 kilometers. And so it's really hard for me to get anything on him, especially since he's turning away. And of course I'm heading away too, to avoid being detected. Now interestingly, it's possible for the Farragut to fire without being detected even though the detectability range increases when you fire the guns, but it's a very narrow margin. It's like, if I fire my guns, I can fire at something between 11 kilometers and 12 kilometers without being uh, detected. But if they're closer than 11.5 kilometers, something like that, I will get detected. There's the Konigsberg, who is closer than 11 kilometers. I'm trying to keep him at a distance, hoping to drop my detectability. But it's tough, of course, trying to keep him at a distance means that I have to shoot from an extremely long range, and it's tough to get hits. Dispersion is high, and even as I do, there is the problem of airplanes spotting me, and uh, you saw there was a bomber there that was spotting me, still spotting me, I'm still detected by an airplane, I just stopped being detected right there. We do have one carrier per side, uh, an important piece of information for what will come next. Well, we're doing good work on this Konigsberg. And he's on his last legs there. Getting a lot of incoming from battleships, I think. Okay, and he's gone. Alright. So, and you can see all of my support ships shooting all over the place. Ouch, ouch. And, uh, oh, I hit somebody? Yeah, there was somebody in the back there. Just trying to avoid getting hit myself. Um... Cleveland. Cleveland is a good target. Tier 6 American cruiser. Uh, very good at anti-aircraft, I've found. And reasonably good with the destroyers. But somewhat vulnerable too sometimes. I've had a lot of trouble trying to aim at things with the Cleveland. I've played it. I have it. My aim always sucks with it. Okay, so uh, here we are, still working on the Cleveland. But there is still that Bluskovica hanging around somewhere. In fact, both of the enemy destroyers are still around somewhere. And I actually realized that it was one of those destroyers who was detecting me, because all the other ships are outside of detection range, there aren't any planes, and yet I'm detected. I see that indicator because of my captain's skill. And sure enough, you can see on the map there, the Bluskovica heading into B there. And so, once again, I try to uh, deal with him. It has not been easy. And he disappears again. Pretty good at uh, concealment, that Bluskovica. And he is capping B, so I have to try and go towards him. Very dangerous thing, obviously. Torpedoes. But then I see the enemy carrier, out of all things, coming close. In front of all of the enemy ships. And so, well... Being a torpedo type player, 
I immediately think that I am going to torpedo him. Here we go. Now there is the enemy destroyer right there. And he's thinking of finishing me off, just as I was thinking of finishing him off. I can't resist that carrier. Coming into such obvious, obviously a bad location for him. And so I'm willing to take the risk. I immediately switch back to the destroyer after I release my torpedoes. And try and deal with him. But he's detecting me and all the enemy ships can see me. And it was not the Bluskavitsa that killed me, it was another one of their ships. But here, let's watch those torpedoes. And... That's the end of the independence. So yeah, uh, well, it was a pretty lackluster fight so far, as far as I'm concerned. I, I got a lot of XP for capping the zones. I did the base captures. But uh, without that uh, independence straying into the middle of the battle, I probably wouldn't have done as well as I did. But there we go. Uh, probably the best battle with the Farragut I'm featuring in this video. And uh, I'm liking the Farragut more and more, but I still need to get some practice with it. And yeah, clearly not much damage done. Lots of shots taken, but not much damage done uh, except to the independence. So uh, I got a lot of XP, in fact enough to get that Sea Hull if I had chosen to, but I chose not to this time. And alright, that will wrap up this video on the Farragut. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.